Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the Samsung GT C3630. This is a unlocked GSM quad band phone that retails for less than 50 euros or roughly 65 US dollars. The current street price is under 30 uh, bucks without a contract, so it remains fairly attractive in terms of its price if you're looking for a very basic messaging phone or a feature phone, and it competes closely with the Nokia 3310 in the same regard of just being a basic Nokia frills handset, perhaps good as a backup option as a travel phone or as a backup device to place in a car. So as far as the dimensions are concerned, this one actually is very compact and small. That's because it offers a 2.2 inch 320 by 240 resolution display, the same resolution as the Nokia 3310, but again, it's smaller than the 2.4 inches we're kind of used to seeing. And that means text and images remain quite clean and crisp just because, again, you have more PPI. And again, the display as a whole offers pretty generous viewing angles and relatively impressive on such a low cost device. In terms of design and hardware, I would say that this phone looks much more expensive than you'd expect, uh, just because they have these uh, kind of tri triangle accents running across the entire theme of the phone, and it almost looks like a designer phone uh, or some of uh, Samsung's more expensive options back in the day. So I certainly like the way that it looks, and it's relatively sleek and stylish, despite the fact that it is made entirely out of plastic as opposed to soft-touch rubber, aluminum, or glass. Otherwise, there's access to the earpiece. Down below here, there is a standard four-way D-pad for navigation, a center OK key. There are talk and end keys. There are soft keys for selecting things on screen. And there is a traditional T9 style keypad for text entry. You can see that the keys here are fairly well spaced and they're tactile and responsive. However, they are a little bit flush with the surface of the phone. And that means if you're running across your fingers in the dark, it may be a little bit difficult to distinguish them by feel alone. There's also a microphone on the very bottom. You can see some additional styling at the very top and bottoms of the phone to have some nice uh, little accents going on that makes the phone again seem more expensive and on the other side there is a dedicated volume rocker in addition to a lanyard strap this is a really nice feature even on a low cost phone it makes uh, you know changing the volume when you're in a phone call a lot more easier than having to take it away from your gear and then manually toggle through the d-pad settings so this is a nice feature that Samsung built in there's also a 1.3 megapixel fixed focus camera on the back, although there is no LED flash, and the chrome here almost acts as a vanity mirror to create some quick selfies on the go. There's also an interesting texture going on in the back plate, which is again made out of plastic, and there's just a full-size SIM card slot behind the battery door. So everything here is pretty simple as far as the design is concerned. There is a hidden slot here for the micro USB port for charging. It charges up in under two hours, and afterwards you'll get standby time of roughly a week before you need to recharge it again. Uh, so outstanding battery life as expected from such a basic multimedia phone. Uh, so if you again are traveling, if you're in regions where a power outlet isn't available, this might be a good option to consider. After roughly 15 seconds, this can be changed in the settings, the screen will dim itself to save on battery and then you have to tap on the top key and the pound key to unlock the phone. You can see the wallpaper here is very similar to other uh, kind of Samsung Galaxy inspired designs, almost like Samsung Vada uh, or their Tizen product. Uh, and how everything is laid out, there's even a few widgets that will continuously roll into the screen as certain functions are accessed. For instance, if I go into settings here and I tap onto music and playing back a sample track or a ringtone by Samsung, I can go back into my home screen and you can see the widget has popped up on screen. It makes it possible to play or pause the sound, skip tracks, and navigate through my music uh, with more ease. And you can also do some very light multitasking in the sense that you can still listen to music while you are, let's say, sending a message or going to the web browser. So this is a nice little feature that they built on in. Uh, so it's definitely smarter than what you'd first expect just by looking at the phone from a design perspective. Going into menu here, we have access to a pretty traditional grid layout of, uh, and the icons here are also quite reminiscent of other Samsung Galaxy phones, uh, especially on the earlier days. There's access to battery, time, and date status on the very top, profile for ringtones, alarms, and here we can toggle into our phone book, our music player, our file manager, messages, a very basic internet browser that uh, will work for mobile sites, but again, since uh, text entry may be a little bit difficult on such a small kind of keyboard without a QWERTY layout, uh, you're really restricted as far as uh, not going into too many desktop sites like the New York Times, but it works for quickly checking 
checking up the weather news or quick status updates on social media. There's also an organizer function, a camera app, an FM radio that does require you to plug in headphones for you to use uh, as the antenna. And unfortunately, this phone, you can tell, does not have a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, uh, which means that you have to pop in an adapter that converts the micro USB into headphones. Uh, and again, the wire of the headphones will act as the antenna for getting reception. Other things on here, there is a quick settings if I want to toggle between display settings, applications, security by setting up a pen each time to unlock the phone. Samsung apps will require internet connectivity and it takes you into their proprietary app store for downloading some other titles such as some quick Java based games and other productivity apps. So it's pretty nice that you also have a very light app store on here which is unexpected on a multimedia or a very basic uh, phone. There's also additional applications applications. So in terms of games, there aren't any demos preloaded since this is an unlocked phone without too much bloatware. There's also a voice recorder that works relatively well. The microphone here is loud and clean sounding and it's great for picking up a, quick, a few quick voice memos or lecture notes. There's also a uh, Bluetooth mode that I can toggle on or off to connect to a wireless headset or headphones for listening to music. A quick timer is also on here and a quick uh, stopwatch. And you can see that the interface here is quite cohesive. Basic organizer features include an alarm clock, and the speaker here is actually quite loud, so it's easy to wake up in the morning. I can set up up to four alarms. There's also a quick memo pad if I want to pick up some quick messages. It does require you to use the T9 keypad, which isn't the most spacious thing in the world, but you can see it's relatively uh, you know, okay to use, and you tap on a key multiple times to get to the desired uh, number or you know, alphabetical symbol. So for instance, C, and then you would wait for a few seconds, let's say E, and then that's how you basically pe peck out your messages on here. It works, but it's obviously not as convenient as having a QWERTY layout. There's also a task manager that is a nice little addition, a world clock, there's also a basic calculator on here, a converter for currency, length, weight, volume, area, and temperature, and that's that's it. So pretty simple and straightforward. Taking a look at the camera interface next, it actually works quite well. There are a few settings that you can toggle through, and overall it's pretty simple and easy to get used to. Tapping on the bar at the bottom, I can toggle between multi-shot, single shot, mosaic shot, and frame shot modes. There's also resolutions that I can toggle between to save on the built-in memory. There is a self-timer mode. There are some effects that you can apply directly, which is actually pretty impressive on such a basic phone. And finally, there are access to white balance modes. Capturing a shot is also relatively quick, although it takes you know a split second for it to process. Afterwards, I can delete it or send it via text message, and also I can toggle back and forth between other images that I've seen. I can also zoom in and adjust uh, you know some properties of this image. So let's go back and take a look at some sample shots that I took with this phone. All right, so navigating into images, I can take a look at my photos, and hopefully that will load up. Uh, you can see that the processor and the RAM are a little bit limited, but uh, it doesn't take too much time to completely render. Afterwards, you can see that the shots themselves can be rotated, they can be renamed, deleted, zoomed in, stuff like that. And uh, overall, not a bad camera, I would say, for such a low megapixel count, 1.3 megapixels, on a relatively low-cost budget phone. You can see that at least there is a nice amount of lighting, and uh, colors themselves are pretty accurate looking, so not bad at all for such a, a basic camera. It's a fixed-focus lens, though, so if you're super close up to your subjects, it may struggle a little bit more, just because it can't you know, focus quite as well compared to things like landscape shots. So all in all, not a bad camera, and you can definitely use it to capture some quick snaps apps uh, to share with friends and family on social media or for emergency conditions. So going back again, we can also take a look at, again, the music player. It's pretty basic, but it gives you access to things like tracks. You can sort by artists' names. You can also view back some basic information like genres, albums, composers, and some quick cover art info can be displayed as well. It plays back MP3 and WMA files without any problems. And what's interesting about the version I have here is even though this phone was meant for the international market, some of these uh, sample songs are actually in Mandarin in Chinese. So if I tap on this,
so you can hear their song in Chinese. And for a ringtone, they're also surprisingly long. This one is over three minutes, so it's kind of interesting there. Uh, but overall, it works. I can also take a look at more information, play this using Bluetooth earphones or speakers, and that works as well. So a pretty nice media experience if you want to use this as an MP3 player as well. When it comes to phone call quality, I was reasonably impressed with this uh, Samsung device. Here in Seattle, Washington, I consistently got roughly three bars of reception with T-Mobile and AT&T, so that's decent. And the microphone itself is loud and clean sounding. Same thing with the earpiece and the uh, speaker on the back. Uh, although it's a, not a noise canceling mic, which means that if you're outdoors and it's super noisy, if you're near an airport, something like that, it will also pick up part of the background noise. But all in all, it works and you know it makes pretty clear, clear and clean sounding phone calls. Battery life again is also quite long at around seven days of standby with some sporadic use before it ran out of juice. So that's been the Samsung kind of GT uh, C363 candy bar form factor basic uh, feature phone and I would say that at around 30 bucks it presents an interesting alternative to other feature phones on the market like the uh, Nokia 3310 for instance. Um, this is definitely a category of phones that are slowly dwindling just because the threshold for buying a smartphone is getting lower and lower since the prices are falling and even a budget smartphone can do so much more these days. However, if you are dead set on getting a phone with great battery life with a relatively easy to use interface, uh, perhaps to give to a kid, perhaps to use as a backup option or to give to the elderly, this may be still a pretty good option to take a closer look at. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This has been our video review and you can check out more details in our article coming out soon. But this has been the Samsung GTC3630.